put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Deliver us from evil, move you. Sergeant Sarchi is not a believer in the supernatural. He sees plenty of evil as he as a New York cop. But when when some things start to connect, it, it almost looks like there's a serial killer thing going on, some things start happening that he can't explain, and he, he needs the help of a priest, and they, they, they have a sort of bromance thing going on, and as will happen, Sarchi's own family becomes, you know, at risk. I was pretty much sold on watching this the moment the first trailer for it told me that it was Scott Derrickson who also directed Sinister. And yeah, I'm I'm very happy with it. I don't know if it's it's not the same as Sinister, but you can definitely tell it's the same guy. And which one is necessarily better than the other? I don't know. They they are they are a bit different from one another. Now, some people have called this, you know, said that the plot is not that interesting or kind of boring. I disagree. I didn't. I was pretty engaged right from the get go, and it. It doesn't start where you might expect it to, but they do they do a thing early on where like the there's a, a camera feed that you basically it you don't see everything that it filmed. It just it it cuts away from it when something happens and then later in the film you get to see the rest of the excuse me of the footage and by then it it excuse me it has a different meaning to it now the this is based on the actual events which is always a <laughs> You, you don't know quite how much you want to trust that, especially when it's something like this. I promise I'm not going to try. As much as the movie might try to convert, I will not try to convert anyone with this. But yes, it was... It's based on the actual events, and it's adapted from the book that the actual Sergeant Sarchi wrote. And he worked as a consultant on the movie as well. So it's safe to say that he had a, a you know a real hand in crafting this. So whatever actually happened, this is you know a reasonable approximation of that. And the script was written by Derrickson himself and Paul Harris Boardman, and they also wrote the, the Exorcism of Emily Rose together, which I have not seen, but I I do intend to. The Sarchi's 
partner is played by Joel McHale, and he's he's got the grin. He's he he gets some really funny lines and moments in this. They they utilize him really well, and at the same time, you take him seriously. And and the film isn't overly funny. It's it's very much like with Sinister. It uses humor at just the right times to just diffuse just enough of the tension. It never. It never feels out of place, neither the, the tension nor the, the humor, in spite of the two being very interwoven at times. And he's, he's really badass, too. It, yeah. I guess when you make that many jokes about celebrities, you need to be able to kick ass. Now, and the, the wife is played by Olivia Munn of G4. This is basically the first time I see her act in something. I mean, she technically was playing a role in that little bit of Iron Man 2, but it was kind of just, she was playing a journalist, so it wasn't exactly a stretch. She does pretty well here. The, the, the whole family thing is really well done with, it's, it's again, it's a lot like with Sinister. Basically, the we have a, a flawed protagonist who has to balance the well-being of his family with what he feels driven to do and what he realizes might really help people, you know, solving crimes, bringing criminals to justice, and you know, in in part, it is this thing of you know where are you going to spend most of your energy and such. But it's also just you can only you know. There's that thing of staring into the abyss. The closer you get to fully understanding and fully solving something gruesome the more that also affects you and either you close yourself off from your family or when you go and be with your family they get at least some of that darkness as well and yeah that's that's a very compelling theme and that's something both movies really go into and again this is it's not the same movie it's it has some similarities and certainly some theme you know thematic elements and other elements in common but it doesn't feel like it's just the same movie not even slightly but but yeah basically he's got this wife and a young daughter i guess she's like 7 or 8 or something and you know, cute kid plays football, and she, yeah, basically it's it sort of seems like they're an ideal family. They don't seem to really have many problems, but there is this thing of basically, yeah, how can he really keep the job? separate and should he should he should he even be doing the job should he maybe just completely retire and there's an early scene where you see how the job is getting to him to where he's yeah he's he's having trouble just coping with you know everyday kind of stuff with the family and it's Again, the wife kind of goes in and is this, she really wants to support him because she knows that he, you know, no matter how, how it might look at this exact moment, she knows that there is a lot in him that she loves, that as long as, you know, there's a little bit of, battered wife, I don't know, but 
it 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 touches upon that territory, and you do feel like maybe maybe it should end, but ultimately the wife does make the decision to stick it out, and in both cases you just really hope that you know in both of these movies you really hope that that turns out to be the you know the right call. Now, this is very much a character-driven film with sort of the the scares, you know, sort of take a second. Yeah, not not as high a priority as the characters, and yeah, you really get into these characters. There weren't now all of the all the lead characters I really wanted to see more of. Sarchi, the, you know, I don't remember, Butler, I think, was Mikhail's character, and the priest, I think Ramirez is, yeah, it's, it's the guy who played Ares in Wrath of the Titans, so, you know, he, you know, he's got some, some passion, and, some, you know, he does have less of, you know, daddy issue stuff going on here, Yes, but, but but yeah, all of these, you know, major characters, I wanted to see more of. I wanted to know more about them. And the remarks have been made about the quality of the New York accents. Yeah, at, at times, everyone tries. They all try. Some of them don't do as well as others. It's it's not all the time, but there are little bits where it's like, you are not really from New York, are you? That was, <laughs> yeah. What whatever your acting coach is charging, for the, <laughs> yeah, you may want to. Now the. The acting is all quite solid. I mean, there there are several characters in this, yeah, who basically some of what they do, they are, yeah. It's it's got the supernatural thing. So you know, not everyone is completely is behaving completely like you'd expect rational people to. The, the the actors who do those things they do it really really well you never feel like they yeah I mean that's that's gotta be really difficult to yeah kudos now the what this and sinister sort of the the main what makes them so scary is primarily the atmosphere and the sort of constant build-up tension where just it's very much the sound basically everything that every single little sound or every single you know, anytime there's any kind of silence, it is very carefully orchestrated. They they put a lot of effort into making sure that every single little sound was exactly right. So, you know, there there are things where it's just you know, okay, that's basically a natural sound, but it still sounds like really horrifying and. Yeah, the a lot of the scares here are really punctuated by this, you know, not loud, but it's it's this sort of off-putting sound, you know, or collection of sounds. And where where Sinister had a lot with creaking floors, this has a lot with scratching noises and and then there's of course you know there's very little light 
and there's this effective ominous score. Now the this is almost as consistently dark as sinister. With just you know, there are some scenes that are like outside during the day and this whole thing, but yeah, there's actually there's one bit that's fairly brightly lit. It's it's a flashback, and you don't have to wait very long into the flashback to realize that the fact that it is bright, brighter than the rest of the movie, doesn't mean that it's going to be any more pleasant to watch. Every, basically, something I, I rewatched Sinister just last night, and something I really noticed was the movie just grabs you and holds you in a chokehold for the duration. Basically, you can't breathe for the entire duration of the movie. And then once the credits start rolling, you can finally start breathing again. And it's going to be really, you know, it's going to be a while before you can really relax. But it's just, there is no, you, you don't zone out. You don't get to just, disassociation. No, 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 that does not happen. This is just, you sat down and watched the movie, it's, it's not going to stop being this intense until the movie is over, and then some after that. Both Sinister and this create these, these fairly simple images that just really, really haunt I'm, I'm not going to give away, but just, yeah. Now, the, the scares in this, there, there are jump scares, but basically Derrickson, you know, puts little twists on what we've seen before and such. And jump scares... There are jump scares in this that at first seem like they're just cheap, but then you see something else, or you know, you, you kind of realize what's really going on, or something happens that fleshes out the jump scare. You know, there's I'm not sure there are any. If there are, there aren't many jump scares that just you know, it's out of nowhere and it's never referred to again. Like, it's difficult to say anything here without really giving away. Basically, yeah, I, I don't think I will be able to give it. But, but yeah, it, it follows the, the setup and payoff. Rules. It it really. There there aren't really any scares in this in this that are just there are just cheap. They the the scares are very carefully crafted in this. Now, something that this has gotten criticism for is that there are some awkward and or silly elements and I agree personally I don't think they they didn't take, take me out of the movie but I can appreciate that there certainly are <laughs> one of the more notable and yeah, something something many reviewers have already pointed out, pointed to is break on through to the other side by the doors is yeah, is is a I, th I think the word is a spiritual pathway in this and yeah, that that is a bit silly. And I can't really say anything other than it it didn't take me out of it. And it's the kind of thing where like with with Sinister, there there are things where if you if you don't 
go into it wanting to really just take it in. And I, I complete. I mean, there are movies that I could, you know, could do that with, but where I choose to, you know, or feel like, yeah, actually more criticizing and such. But with this and with Sinister, if you choose to take it in as it is, it's really well done. Now, the... There is... There's a pretty decent amount of violence and gore in this. I... I didn't think that the gore particularly got to be excessive and it was mostly effective. It was, yeah. And and it also wasn't, like there, there are different ways to do gore and in this I thought it was pretty, again it, it sort of, it built, it built on top of and it wasn't, yeah, it just, it, it didn't feel just like shock in your face kind of thing. Now, this has a very, it's been compared somewhat to Seven with, in, you know, how dirty, filthy it makes the city feel, and that's very much true. And this is also, this, in part, it's, you know, a crime mystery. So some have said that it's a thriller more than a horror movie. Perhaps. I, I'm, I'm not sure I'd quite go that far, but... It's not Sinister. Sinister was a horror movie. And this is more, you know, a, a lot of time is spent trying to figure out what is really going on with, you know, yeah, with these, you know, the serial killer kind of situation. And they you know, they're, they're actually going around doing police work. They're not just, you know... Yeah, they, it's very much... They, they take matters into their own, hand, own hands and it really keeps, keeps moving with that. Now... And this also does the very effective horror thing of taking something that's comfortable, perhaps even enjoyable, and then twisting it, twisting it into something horrifying. You know, this... Short of, like, what JJ did with it, this is the most disturbing use I've seen of Pop Goes the Weasel. Now... In addition to the jump scares, scares in this are sort of... They, they sometimes just last longer, like some of them are just these sequences where it's extremely tense and even though there isn't necessarily something like hugely scary going on. It's, you know, you're on the edge of your seat for what's going to happen next and for what might happen in the, excuse me, in the current situation. And like with Sinister, this is very much, you know, 80s John Carpenter, Prince of Darkness kind of thing. And, I mean, 
with a lot of newer horror movies, I don't even I don't even watch them because they just when I do, they keep letting me down. And this, you know, these two Scott Derrickson movies so far have not at all let me down. So, yeah. Now. The... What when you do this sort of exorcism possession kind of thing, it matters a lot how you approach it. And one thing that this does that is really, really smart in that is it's a lot about the people involved. So it's very much about Sergeant Ralph and yeah the the what's actually going on with him and yeah the the as I mentioned earlier the that his his family appear to be in danger as well more than just It's, it's common for this kind of thing that the family is in danger, but in this we really get a sense of what the family is like before there is any danger. So we know that it's not, it's not just a cliche. It's not just, you know, I mean, when you, see, when you hear someone's family, you know, something bad has happened to someone's family, there's like an a knee-jerk reaction, aw, poor them. But that in and of itself is not necessarily enough for good fiction, so doing it like this, going in and saying, well, this is what the family is like, this is how they are together, and yeah, there's this thing of, yeah, that, that makes it much more effective. Now, others have pointed out the, the scene at the Bronx Zoo, very scary, very creepy. I suppose that more or less covers that I... Now the, the you can you can probably guess what the climax is going to be, and it's really really well done. It's I wouldn't have thought that I would really get into a scene like that, but it was it was amazing, incredibly intense. Now. I suppose this is very well produced through and through. Some people have said that the action scenes are very bad in this. To an extent, yes, it's definitely the angles are too close and it's cut too fast. But it's another one of those things where I can appreciate it. If that really takes you out of the movie, yeah, I'm not going to claim it's not there. I just don't think it's really a movie that's that much about the action scenes, but, you know, to, to each his own. And I'm not going to claim that they're good, the action scenes. I, I would suggest avoiding trailers before watching this 
but at the same time, they don't give away far too much. Now, I suppose that. One thing I really like about Scott Derrickson and the work I've seen with him so far is that he he pushes the tension right to the edge, but it doesn't go too far over. Like it's very difficult to get the the balance just right to make sure to, you know not rushing the scare but giving it its proper time and then once you have it there then maintaining it so it doesn't feel like an anticlimax and not going too far not over stimulating the audience I mean this is the kind of movie where you really think you really feel like this is just can't do this I, I need air can't you know no more of this but it is actually very carefully it, it never stays intense for too long in you know without any kind of relief and you know no matter how tense or how gory you know it always manages to bring us just enough back down so that we you know Again, you know, this this one isn't as much of a chokehold as Sinister is, but it's still, you're not going to just relax as long as you're still watching a movie, but you're also not, like, you know, completely falling apart all the time. You know, it, it's very nicely paced like that. Now, I think... I think that pretty much covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.